All right, uh, thanks for joining us today, everyone. We're going to um, we're going to be talking about how to improve organizational efficiency and student success um, with the team at Flight Schedule Pro. So, um, for any of you that were at Redbird last year, Redbird Migration, and uh, maybe stopped into a talk that we gave, uh, I spent some time talking about the importance of KPIs. Uh, which are key performance indicators and you know at the time we were really talking more about the value of tracking metrics and creating KPIs in order to improve the efficiency of your organization and the success of your uh, students um, and it was all a bit theoretical then in, in the sense that we were just beginning our journey of identifying the best way to create tools that allow allow you to do this in our uh, in our product so uh, this year we're actually taking it into um, actual practice and we're going to kind of show you guys around how some of our customers are using the, the new tools that we've built to allow you to uh, track these metrics and, and really impact your organization so um, I guess let's get into it uh, my name's Chris Hanna uh, I'm a product manager at Flight Schedule Pro. I've been here for um, for a few years now, and uh, I'm joined today by Nick Ginther, who many of you, if you use our product, probably know him already. Yeah, and I've been here just a little bit longer than Chris, a couple months longer than Chris. So we've been here for what coming up on four years now. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. So uh, the first thing we're talking about is is a newer product that we have it's actually still in beta it's called advanced reporting uh, basically flight schedule pros advanced reporting is is currently helping customers track metrics that impact efficiency so uh, we're back to the KPI talks uh, I, I can tell you what really happened with advanced reporting is that we you know we started talking with all of our customers and we and and, and people in the industry and what we came to realize is that uh, everybody has different metrics that they track that that they believe are key to their success, and that really, as a you know, as a SaaS company, that that put us in a bit of a spot because we couldn't build the perfect report or the perfect dashboard for everybody. So we we embarked on a on a new a new journey with the product called that we're calling advanced reporting. Um, what we've done is we've you know we've given it a a pretty good size all of our reporting a pretty good size facelift um and we've introduced some very powerful new features so what we have done is really exposed every piece of data about all the objects in the system so an object would be let's say a, an aircraft and an aircraft takes flights or um, a student a student has training sessions Every single one of those objects that we could think of, we tried to expose all that data to you uh, in something that we call analysis grids. And these analysis grids are like almost like like Excel spreadsheets on on steroids. Um, they, they allow you to to do all types of analysis, um, create charts off that analysis, create cross tabs, um, even include uh, custom formulas. To customize the data and how you're you're interacting with that data, um, uh, you can take all these data models, do all this analysis. You can even join these data models together. And the point of using these these analysis grids is that you build analysis in order to create visuals. And once you have created a library of visuals, which we've also Flight Schedule Pro has also included a, a library of um, visuals just for you to use out of the box. But once you create these visuals, you can then use them on dashboards, custom dashboards, which we're gonna look at a couple of those uh, here in just a little bit with Nick. Um, you can create custom reports that you can send to anybody uh, outside of the organization. Um, you can share these dashboards. You can even share your analysis with somebody that that maybe would would find value or that would want to look at um, some of the trends that you're seeing in the data. So it's been a really, uh, it's been a long journey, wouldn't you say, Nick? I mean, yeah, it, it has. 
I mean, we've been working um, on this uh, probably since last Redbird migration, but uh, people are using it now, and and that's that's the best part for us because now that people are starting to use it, we get to see um, how people utilize the product in ways that that do impact their efficiency and 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 do make their organization run more smoothly, and that's really exciting to us because uh, we we just learn from how you all use our product right so now we start to see what people build we see what matters to them we start to see patterns that means that we can add more data models it means we can add more um more canned reports to the libraries um you know more information to the help docs to to um to, to really help you build new stuff i mean uh, Nick's going to talk about it here in a minute, but the the ability to write formulas is really pretty wild. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty awesome that you can take your data, create formulas, create um, basically create new data with formulas. But as with everything, it's I mean, it, it, you know, it, it takes a little practice. So you know, I think we imagine. I would say, what do you think, Nick? Putting together like, uh, for for lack of a better word, a cookbook. For you to go in and see formulas people are creating um but anyway look yeah. I, I i probably went off on too much of a tangent talking about the product uh let's let's get back talking about some of the cool stuff that our customers are doing um yeah right now yeah so that that's a good segue and i i do want to point out as we're moving into these next slides here um I don't want to dig into how things are built at this point. There, there's a lot that goes into this. There's a lot of different things that people are doing. What I do want to show off is some things that our customers are currently doing right now. So these are some screenshots. We got permission to share these from a customer. Um, and she is, she kind of did what Chris and I do and it just kind of nerded out and spent a lot of time building these dashboards. So the first thing we're looking at here is her daily statistics dashboard. You can see um, they are tracking their average CFI hours per month, per month average uh, flight hours per day. They've got their breakdown of different um, activity types in here. So about half their flying is, or half their reservations are dual flight training. So this is a, a one-stop shop. This is real live data that when you go, like every time you go look at a dashboard like this, this is all updated. Um, there, there's a couple things on here that I want to point out as well. These, these bars on here are, they're, they're called uh, balloon bars or goal bars. So you can see they are, when I took this screenshot, just a couple hours behind their goal of, of 40 CFI hours per day this month. And that's all their CFIs. Um, if you look at the top of this page, you can see the CFI hours. And I didn't take a screenshot of that because there's, there's personal data in there. But you can see a breakdown of each CFI's data per day and see how, you know, who's, who's not flying enough, who's not instructing enough towards that goal. So that's a really neat feature in here. Um, I'll point it out and we'll talk about it a little bit more here in a minute. But you can also see on here the estimated uh, month based on average flights per day for both the instructors and the flights. And that as Chris was saying, there's some really cool formula stuff going on with that, that is basically taking um, the ratio of reserve time to flight time. So if you're flying, say, 0.7 for every hour reserved, we are estimating, or, or they are estimating, I should say, with the tools that we built um, and forecasting out kind of what they're going to be doing for this month. So that's a really neat feature on, on this particular dashboard. On the next slide here, to you know, dig well, into that, go ahead. But before you go on to the next one, I, I want to point out that like th this is a really great example of mm -hmm. why you know at Flight Schedule Pro we didn't think that the idea would be for us to try to build everything for you, right? Because um, first of all, there's so many different roles at your at your organization that want to see different things. You know, like your maintenance your maintenance manager is probably not going to be looking at this dashboard as much. As a dashboard that's made for the maintenance manager, uh, so I, I just wanted to point out that like this is complex data, distilled into uh, readily available, always updated, and targeted just towards what you want to see. 
because because you built it. So um, that's one of the big pieces of power I think that this this product brings to the to, to the mix. Yeah, and that that's that makes me think about. We always say like we don't run a flight school, a flight schedule pro. You guys run flight schools, and you know what data is valuable to you and we would get requests for, can you build us this report or can you build us a dashboard? And we are, I personally, and I know Chris is too, are really excited to get these tools out there. And it's really, really neat for us to see the people that actually do run flight schools running with it and building cool stuff like this. Um, I talked about this a little bit. Like I said, I got excited and jumped ahead a little bit. But on here, the uh, estimated month based on average per day the flight hours and the CFI hours. This is one of the coolest things I've seen in here so far, because like I said, they're taking a, what, it, what amounts to an efficiency metric. How, how much flight time are we getting per hour reserved and using that to project out for the full month. And I didn't know you could do that. The, the client reached out and said that they were doing some really cool things and they were. And so I, I wanted to just kind of highlight that because this is, this is created data. This isn't something that, um, there's no data point in Flight Schedule Pro that just says this estimated average. They used formulas to create this and then use it on their dashboard. So I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, we've got a, a resource stats management on here. So this is going back to um, their reservations per activity type. And these, these are today's reservations. So like on the day that I did this, uh, half of their flights were dual or half of their reservations were dual flight training. Um, they had some instructor to instructor training and maintenance and things like that. So that's a pie chart. Um, there, there's a bunch of different charts you can do in here. Uh, they are also tracking on here reservations this month, their total number of active users and the number of discovery flights. And this co particular company has two different kinds of discovery flights, but that's a, that's a sales metric, right? How many people are we bringing in the door? So, it's just a, it's a really neat use of this tool. And if you notice up here at the top of the screen, uh, today flight hours CFI, this is all one dashboard. This particular company has got a dashboard specific to maintenance with more detailed maintenance in it. They've got a dashboard specific to um, their CFIs and their student load and things like that. So it, it's been, like I said, really neat to see what people are doing with this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, this customer is teaching us stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which, you know, it, it, by my estimation, that's a great product. <laughs> if, if we can get it out there and people can do so much cool stuff that we're learning more about uh, about the product as we go. I mean, the sky's the limit, uh, you know, as long as, um, like you said, Nick, we just kind of took some time to nerd out. And, and next thing you know, we're, we're, we're seeing really cool stuff. Yeah, exactly. And just to kind of round this dashboard out, um, we've got the a flight hours dashboard. So this this is called a cross tab here at the top. It's just it's a breakdown by month of the flight hours for each of their aircraft. Um, you can see they've reused the visual for the estimated uh, flight hours based on the average. They've uh, got a ticker on there for flight hours to date, and then their goal on here in a in a year over year, I should say month over month on here that you're seeing as well. So all one dashboard you can take a look at that first thing in the morning all these visuals can be put on reports as well and scheduled to go out at set intervals uh, so even if there's people that aren't logging into flight schedule pro every day that aren't necessarily you don't want them to have access to flight schedule pro you can still get them the data that they need with those scheduled reports yeah yeah awesome um Thanks for uh, running us through those. I, I'll tell you what, I, I love those those goal bars. I do, I do too. It's, it's so, so great cool. to be able to set, <laughs> set it some nerds. All right. All right, cool. So uh, the, the other thing that we we're going to talk about today is uh, student progress tracking. So it it's funny, when, when I was at Redbird last year, we were, we had, we were really just um, kind of, kind of, approaching this principle that we could create a way for you to um you know there, there's tracking students progress which is to say like all right i know this student did five sessions last week they did 10 10 hours of of 
dual flight training and four hours of ground training. So that that's telling you, you know, what they've done. But for us, a big goal was to be able to create a way for you to look at what they've done and say, you know, should they have done more or did they do too much? Out of what they did, did they do it well? Because just because you got they got 10 hours of dual doesn't mean they um, they passed every lesson or every session. Yeah, was, was that 10 hours used efficiently? Right, exactly. So, you know, we, we kind of took that as a real challenge to say, you know, how can we go beyond just reporting what's happened and, and, and say, it, it ha- is what happened good? Um, or, you know, who needs, who needs a little bit more work? So we, we built this product called Student Progress Tracking. Um, after a lot of conversations that, that we had w- with people that were at Redbird and people that followed up with us about the ideas, um, and, and basically we built this product that allows you to set expectations. Uh, once you've set those expectations, you can then track performance uh, across the whole company uh, of, of all the students in your, you know, in your organization. You can track their performance, and then uh, so that's the macro picture, and then get down to the to the more personal uh, picture of supporting students and and really helping uh, the instructors and the students have have a good conversation about how they could improve their training or how they um, um, how they're performing, how they could perform better. Uh, it was really, a, it was a long, it was a long process. I mean, we, we had to write some, um, some really interesting algorithms and, and we had to really, I think, try to be creative in, in terms of the way to set expectations in a way that normalizes that data. So when I say normalize that data, it's like, you know, if you've got 10 courses, um, those 10 courses have got all types of different course minimums and and requirements and uh, milestones within each of those courses. And then on top of that, you've got students starting at different times, students going at different paces. Uh, I know, Nick, you're a, you're you're kind of a, a weekend warrior in 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 training, right? Uh, I suppose you could say that. <laughs> so, but like you you're certainly going to be training slower than you know uh, a, a, someone who's in a career program. Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't think your wife would 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 like that you having this full time <laughs> job, and then also. Yeah, no, I did that for a little while, um, and it. She didn't like it. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so anyway, I, I mean, the point is, it it was really a challenge to be able to, to to try to find a way to say how could we show all the students at once, even though they're all in different courses, started at different times, they're working at different paces. Um, you know, how can we report back on all of them at once and say whether they're doing well or whether they they could could improve on on their um, on, on their training, so so we rolled out this uh, student progress tracking, and um, uh, when did we roll that out, Nick? Um, in February of this right. year, something like that. Yeah. It seems like because I think we were at a, another conference when we did that. Um, yeah. So yeah, to to kind of roll from what Chris was talking about about setting expectations, we'll go through each of those those bullet points here. Um, this is where that normalization happens. The goal here really was to to let you boil. It doesn't matter if they're private, instrument, commercial, multi-engine add-on. Doesn't matter if they need you know 250 hours per commercial or, or 35 for 141. What we're trying to do here is boil that all down to: Is the student ahead, on track, at risk, or behind? And you start doing that using these progress profiles. So. Per course in your system, so say take a private uh, 141 private pilot course, um, you may have students that are, are weekend warrior types that are flying once or twice a week, and you might have career track students who are flying four or five times a week. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're tracking, we're tracking that in one course and applying different progress profiles here. So the first thing you're doing is setting the 
um, expected number of lessons to be completed every seven days. So every rolling seven days in this particular profile, we expect somebody to have done four lessons. Uh, below that, you've got that color-coded slider. That's letting us set parameters or set the, the thresholds where we start changing that status. Um, so for instance, on a fast track student like this, it's training four times a week. We're going to set those parameters a little bit tighter because it's more important for those. You, well, more important may not be the right word, but you, you're going to have tighter parameters on them because you want to keep them moving towards the end goal of, you know, getting their commercial pilot's license, getting their CFI, whatever that is. On a, on a weekend warrior, this gets more into a mo motivational tool, right? I'm not going to penalize somebody that falls two lessons behind when I only expect them to fly two lessons a week anyway. I just want to keep track and just make sure that they're not, you know, not falling off the wagon here. So that's where that slider bar is coming into play there. You're defining how far ahead or, or behind they can be in terms of number of lessons before we start changing that status. Um, yeah. And I mean, sorry, Nick, I, I, I guess it's, it's, it is interesting when you think about the, the weekend warrior versus the career pilot training. Um, you know, if, if when you went in to start your training, if they said to you, like, hey, if you if if this takes you a year to finish this, this license, it's probably going to cost you more than if than if it took you six months, because over the course of that year, you're going to be training less. You know, you're going to have to refresh yourself every time you come back to fly. You know, so it's it's. It goes a little, it can go beyond just motivation into the point is that this is saving money, right? I mean, yeah, uh, this is important. And, and of course, it's obvious with a career pilot training person, because if it takes them longer, they're over budget and that costs the organization money. Right. But yeah, um, we really we really did. We're really hoping that this can create, uh, you know, a lot of flexibility and, and not just be you know, a way to find out who's ahead or behind, but also a way to motivate people and, and I guess make more money. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and moving down to the next section here, course minimum expectations. Um, these aren't necessarily the same as the FAA minimums for a particular course. So 141 private pilots is 35 hours of total flight time, 35 hours of ground. Um, but maybe your program includes, you know, for a set price includes 50 hours of flight training, something like that. I think the average is somewhere around 55 hours to get your private pilot's license right now. So even though in the course itself, you can track against the FAA minimums to make sure that they hit their, their total flight time, total dual solo, things like that. In here, you're really setting those expectations. And what you're doing on here is saying, um, for instance, on here, you've got lesson one is dual. And so after lesson one, we expect you to have one hour of dual. If you log lesson uh, three, which is the next ground session here, that's also expecting one hour of dual. So now we expect you to have two hours. So you can see on here how that's working. It, it's saying, do, are, you, um, are you doing the prescribed amount of training for each lesson in here? And, and what that's doing is making sure that a student doesn't get uh, get to the end of the course and they have 20 hours more than they actually needed, or they get to the end of the course and they have 20 hours to make up. So are you spending the prescribed amount of time per lesson to stay on track here? So you'll notice at the bottom, there is no ahead. You're, you're either within that narrow on track band or you've got too few or too many hours for where you're at in the course at any given point. Yeah, and I think that's a good point, right? Like these aren't these aren't minimums; these are expectations. So Nick mentioned that you can have multiple progress profiles. So your expectations for a weekend warrior are probably going to be higher than the expectations for the career pilot training person who's doing it three days a week. And and we have customers that have it set up that way as well. I mean, they have people that fly. Um, that they're kind of in a high school program that, that fly like once a month and their hours expectations are somewhere in the, the 90 hours to get their private pilot range. But they've also, you know, started doing this when they were 14 years old, they can't solo for another two years. They can't get their license for another couple of years after that. So 
their their expectations are are uh, their expectation of hours is much greater than the FAA mandated minimums. Where same company also same client of ours has uh, contract students that have a date that they have to be out and they need to get done as close to the minimum as possible. So their progress profiles range from like I think. 42 hours all the way up to 90. So it's it's really flexible. And, and on what we're going to look at on the next page, actually, is you start normalizing all that data together. And then you have a clear picture of doesn't matter what they're doing. It doesn't matter if they're commercial or private or instrument or anything. Where are they at based on the expectations that we assigned to them uh, early on in the core well before they even started training? So this is the student progress overview page here. Um, like I said, normalizing the data, you can see there are private and instrument and commercial students on here. There are different progress profiles in here. And you can see the breakdown at the top of who is ahead, who is on track, who is at risk, and who is behind. So kind of going back to, to what Chris was saying, this is high-level performance tracking. This is how is my school doing or dig in and say how, you know, this instructor is assigned 10 students and half of them are at risk and 25% of them are behind, where do we need to go coach that instructor? Um, do we need, is the workload too high? Things like that. So another interesting thing that, that's come up with this, especially for our schools that have um, contract or, or career track pilot students and also not an infinite number of resources, right? Nobody has as many planes as they want generally. So if you've got a, a group of students that all need to get done around the same time and you're trying to keep them all in that on-track band, this view becomes something that you can look at during scheduling as well. Uh, if you want to prioritize at-risk students ahead of people who are ahead, then you're kind of dragging everybody back into the on-track band. So this this is really valuable and, and kind of like the uh, advanced reporting stuff. It's been interesting to hear the stories and and hear the use cases that we we didn't think of. So yeah. Um, oh, were you gonna say something? Yeah, no, I was just gonna follow up on what you were saying too about you know this this can be. This can, this can apply to more than just how are your students doing, right? Like you can use this data. Uh, also, I should make it, make it known that this data is also available in the analysis grids that we have uh, in our advanced reporting. So if you wanted to break some of this down, you know, you could learn more than just 19.28% of my students are behind. You know, you could come across insights such as um, on average, people underperform in this course. Maybe we need to change the makeup of the course or even get down to a, probably a lesson level and say, look, everybody fails this lesson twice. Maybe we should break the lesson up or everybody does two to three times more hours on this lesson than they're supposed to. So this, there's just a lot, it's a lot of data. Uh, and, and, you know, what you, you know, like we were saying, you, you can use this type of data to just really, pick out some metrics that matter to you that that, that impact uh, your impact your performance. Yeah. And so to, to take that to the next step here, um, we, we've been talking about it at a high level, at an organizational level. How are my courses doing? How are the instructors doing? How um, how is my student body doing as a whole? But this data is also exposed on an individual level when we dig into a course profile here or a, a course overview, we can see and the students themselves can see where they're at. So on this particular profile, I'm marked as a 4.6 lessons behind. I have not enough ground time for where I'm at, but I've flown a little bit more than I should have. Um, the main thing on here that I'm, that's putting me in this at risk category is not flying enough. So this is really valuable in, in having done this, sitting down with an instructor, especially after a flight that didn't quite go so well. And they're like, well, yeah, you haven't flown in a week. If you're going to be rusty on some of the stuff that you would have been fresh on if you were flying more. So this is a, a way for the instructor to really communicate with their students or potentially for a chief instructor to communicate with the, the everyday instructors 
on, hey, all of your students are falling behind on lesson 17. Uh, you're repeating lesson 17. Like, how can we make this better for you? And in turn, how can that instructor turn around and make their students more successful and and hopefully teach that better? Well, that sounds bad, but hopefully uh, be more efficient in their training and and not not have people graduating in a in an at risk or behind status. Here, the goal is to to keep everybody on track. Yeah, yeah, and you know what I like about this this view for the student and the instructor is that like this is this is the purpose of collecting data taking the time to understand the things that matter because you know just having data and and metrics and kpis for the sake of having it or because a website or a webinar with flight schedule pro guys told you to like it doesn't matter. The whole point of it is to make the data useful to your team. Uh, and when, when you think, when we think about the ability for an instructor and a student to sit down and have a really constructive conversation around why they are uh, at the status they're at, when things maybe started to go, uh, started to they, they fell behind. Um, you know, at that point, you can dig into the lesson and say, "Oh, remember we had these issues." Like. To us, facilitating this communication based on the, the the metrics and the data, that's the whole point of data, right? I mean, it's useless to you if it's not creating value. And, and we, I think of this, this student uh, course overview dashboard as kind of the embodiment of that value and, and why we do that work. Definitely. So, uh, cool. So, um, you know, I hope that I hope that Nick and I didn't get too excited and just talk about the product because I like, think we probably did. Yeah, probably <laughs> so. But like the the point is, we are we, we are truly passionate about uh, helping our customers succeed, and all of these things that we work on, they come from feedback from the customers. Um, you know, a customer will drop an idea. And next thing you know, we spend two months trying to figure out how to execute and how to give them uh, the power to do what they're saying or, you know, they identify an issue, particularly Nick. I mean, Nick spends all his time on the phone with customers and they're having one problem or another. And um, and then Nick calls me and then I have, you know, I can't always help him, but, you know, enough times we hear the same story over and over like, man, I wish I knew how my customers or how my students were doing uh, as opposed to just what my students have done. And, and these are the outputs. So, I mean, for those of you that are already our customers, please always keep the feedback coming. I hope you guys are going to use advanced reporting so that we can learn from you about the cool things you guys are doing with it. Um, Cause that only teaches us how to make the product better. Uh, but once again, off the product into the metrics, we do truly believe that, that, putting in the hard work of identifying the metrics that are important to you is the pathway to more success, more efficiency, more success, happier customers. Um, uh, and, and we hope that we can uh, continue to help you all with that. Um, if anybody that is a subscriber already or, you know, is one of our customers has some questions about these, as you know, get a hold of Nick. Nick loves answering everybody's questions and he would, uh, as you could see, he'd be happy to nerd out with you to show you how to how to set set some of this up. Uh, and if you're not a customer, just get a hold of us, and we we can see if we can, you know, create value for your organization. Nick, you got Definitely. anything else? Yeah, I just just to take that what you were just saying. Um, some of the coolest stuff that that I've done recently has been. With the, with this advanced reporting tool, people calling me with a question: How can I find out X? And I don't know. I don't know how to find it, but I will certainly dig in and we'll do it. And that's really really fun for me. And um, like Chris said, it, I will nerd out on this with somebody. I'll sit there and and help try and solve any of those questions. So yeah, don't hesitate to reach out if you're interested in taking a look at any of this. All right. Well, thank you, everybody that uh, made it to the end of this video with us. And uh, hopefully next year we'll see you guys all in person. Yep.